Hey guys, in this week's episode of Friday Tips, we're gonna go over how to get your first Webflow client. Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, this is Friday Tips. It's a chance for you as subscribers and viewers to ask any questions that you want me to answer about agencies, Webflow, and the business side of running a website design agency. If you haven't checked out last week's episode yet, we did it on delegating and who should be delegating your agency and who to pass the work on. This week, we're going over how to get your first Webflow client. I've got four tips in this episode to try and help you out. Number one, ask friends and family. This is how I got my first Webflow client. I asked a friend in a messenger group. I'll see if I can find the message. And I said, hey guys, I've just started creating websites. Do any of your friends or family that you know of want a website made for them cheap? And um, the emphasis here was, it was my first one, so I wasn't gonna charge like 10,000 pounds. I think I did it in the end for around 400 quid or something like that. Did it for a friend's mum's company, who's a cleaning company. Made them a really nice website. Uh, she was really happy. I got a portfolio piece at the end and it was a really great experience. So if you want to have a bit of a message template to send, I would say something along the lines of, hey guys, I have just started a new journey in designing websites. I'm looking for my first client. If any of you know friends or family who want a cheap website, which is really high quality, please give them my contact information and I'll be able to help out. Make sure to start off not charging too much. Put your absolute effort into it and create the best portfolio piece that you possibly can. Tip number two, now this is more in line with how you're presenting yourself and it's gonna help you get a client through the door and make that sell as well. So the biggest thing here is we want to seem professional as soon as we get through the door. The main thing is you need to make sure that you've got a contract in place and you've got a proposal. Now I'll flash up what the first ever proposal of mine looked like. It was thrown together in Google Docs, but the main thing I made sure that I had was a, a cover letter, what they're getting, how much their hosting's going to cost, next steps, and something for them to sign off as well. Then I got a contract from Google. If you just type in website design contract, you can find a basic one that you can have them sign. This makes sure that you're covered. Just make sure to edit it so that the details inside cover your payment terms. Take 50% up front. And this is a really great chance for you to show your expertise, show your professionality. They're gonna feel so much more comfortable going through the process with you than if it's just like, okay, give me the money and, and we start. <laughs> I mean, that, that just never really gives anybody confidence uh, at all. Number three, you can walk into a business and you can pitch for the work. Main thing here is I used to do this with real estate agents. So I would go on their website. I would look at the site and see if there's anything that I noticed that is wrong. I would either type it up and put it into a document or I would just um, write it down in my notebook. Then I would walk into the business and I would ask them, who is the best person to talk to about your website? Now, usually, because the owner is the person who deals with that, they'll hand you to the owner. But don't take anything else. If they say, what is this about? Just say, this is a conversation that I need to have with the owner. I've noticed a couple of really poor mistakes on their website that's losing them hundreds of thousands of pounds and uh, they, need to, they need to have a chat with me. Don't allow the gatekeeper on reception to show you away. Refuse to leave until you've spoken to the owner. Don't be rude about it, still be professional, but make sure that you make them understand that you're not going to leave until you at the very least tell the owner about these problems that they're having. Make sure that the problems you find are actually business related. So when you walk in, you want to know whether their SEO is really poor and they need to know about that. There's some broken links on their website and you just want to have a conversation with the owner about this. Never go in with the idea like, I'm going to try and sell them a five to 10,000 pound website. Go in with the idea that you want to help, 
You want to show them the problem, have a conversation, and at the very least, walk away knowing that you've helped another business. And do not worry about if you do not make the sale. The main thing here is building the confidence to walk in and talk to business owners. And after you do it a couple of times, you'll suddenly start feeling more confident and be able to then pitch to pretty much anyone about a website that you want to sell. Number four, this is one of my favorites and I advise a lot of my subscribers who are just starting out to do this one. The main thing here is you're going to make a free website, but it's going to be your portfolio piece. It's your first website that you've made. So, so what you're going to do is you're going to find a medium to small size business, one that's actually got a good amount of traffic online. You can use some tools to kind of guess how much traffic they're having, or if they're just like a business that's really popular in your area. Now look at their website and ask yourself, can it be improved? Is there something that we can do to make it better? The main thing here is you're going to walk in and you want to show them a couple of examples of work. This needs to be some of that test work that you've done in terms of learning the platform that you're using. I wouldn't walk in and not be able to show them anything. At the very least, you could just show them examples of better looking websites that are their competitors, whether that's in a separate city to where they're based or even anybody who is local as well. Talk to them about how you're just starting out and you want to build a portfolio. And the main thing here is you want to still give them the confidence that you're professional. So make sure that you're not scaring them or like making them feel worried because you're saying the words free and I'm new and stuff like this. It's all about how you phrase it. But the best way that you can go in is say, I'm looking for a superstar client to become my portfolio piece. Because of this, I'm offering to do a website for free. I will build it to look like this and show them your examples and then show them their website and say, at the moment, I don't think your site is there. What do you think? Start having a conversation with them about it and build them that website for free. Now, by picking a small to medium business that is really popular, you will have high traffic. And because of that, you can start putting analytics onto the website. You can track button clicks, form sends, and phone calls. This is data you can then use to sell to future clients. And you can say to the next client that you're talking to, I got this client in our local area, 30 form submissions in a month. And his average client costs uh, 50 bucks. So I generated for him an extra 1,500 pounds. That's so much money. And you can start then building your way up, charging 1,500 for a website, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, until you get confident enough that you can charge 10 to 20,000 per website. So guys, uh, this Friday tips came out on a Saturday. Uh, you'll have to watch the vlog to understand why that what happened yesterday. I was very busy, but I hope this video helps. If you have any further questions about things that you would like to know that I can do in these Friday um, videos, please put a comment down in the comments below and I'll make sure to try and do a video on it next Friday. And also guys, if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe, give the video a like, and it lets me know that I'm putting out the right kind of content. Okay guys, I'll see you later, bye.